and get my face off the screen. So, <laughs> so I'm not, I'm not like. Where do you want to go? Where do you want to go? I want you to, if you would just get it back to where the website is. Back to the website. While he's doing that. So my name is Sasha, and um, it's such an honor to be here with you all. And I'm, um, I'm going to tell you a story. Uh, but I'm going to tell you a story about a story. Um, Brad and I have been working together for a bunch of years, and this, this frame we have of working with narrative has become more and more useful as the time goes on. Because it, it becomes really clear that we think in stories, like they're, we're constantly processing and the, the ways that we analyze the world. So here's my story. So in 2002, I wrote the cover story for the Bay Guardian, San Francisco Bay Guardian Lit Magazine. And it was about my experiences of being locked up in psychiatric hospitals and diagnosed with bipolar disorder. And I've been writing for a lot of years, um, but within this kind of insular, subcultural community that I come from. And this was the first time I had ever written something that thousands of people had read. And within two days of me writing the article, my inbox was filled with responses from all of these other folks who had read my story, and it had so resonated with them that they felt compelled to tell me their story back, because that's usually how these things work, you know, when you tell your story, that people want to talk back to you, I've learned over the years. So, all of a sudden, basically my story was a story of someone who just never really fit in, and was really alienated by society, and end up, ended up hanging out in the punk scene in New York where I was growing up, and kind of found a place for myself. And when I got locked up in psych hospitals for the first time at 18, when I got out, you know, it's not like I had a very stable family life. It's not like I, like, but what I had in place was this frame of mind that came from my community, which was basically like, you don't have to be ashamed to be crazy. Like, if the world is obviously crazy, and if you're crazy, it's just a reflection of that. And that the power of that was so important to my mental well-being that, I was like, okay, well, I'm just gonna go on with myself. As I got a little older, I, I went and did a whole lot of interesting things with my life, and I managed to get myself locked up again a couple more times. And I spent a month in Los Angeles County Jail on the psych unit. And by the time I got out of that situation, you know, I'd been diagnosed bipolar one with psychotic features. You can look in the DSM and I, I fit it really well. And uh, <laughs> I kind of like talking loud because I'm excited. <laughs> if I stand by here, I'm scared I'm going to talk too loud. Um, basically, I'm going to tell you a story about how just because I was brave enough to tell my story, all these other people came together and we created this website called the Icarus Project. And the Icarus Project is based on this metaphor of this boy who has wings, but he doesn't know how to use his wings and he flies too close to the sun and he drowns in the ocean. And basically what we were saying was, rather than seeing ourselves as diseased or disordered or having dysfunctions, we see ourselves as having dangerous gifts. And, you know, for me, have, like, switching that frame, like switching the metaphor in my mind from the disease model to something that was actually like, yeah, I'm sensitive, I'm incredibly sensitive. And you know what, I'm proud of it. I have to, have to work really hard to take care of myself, but it's not something to be ashamed of. So. That was 10 years ago, and in the last 10 years, we've done all kinds of interesting things. One of the first things that we did was we wrote this book called Navigating the Space Between Brilliance and Madness, a reader and wrote a map of bipolar worlds, which is in its ninth printing. And so all these people read these stories that we put together from our website, and then we got a grant. It was, a, you know, the power of philanthropy. Someone gave us $80,000, and we partnered with an organization in New York called Fountain House. And they gave us an office in Manhattan, and all of a sudden, I was going around the country to college campuses and trying to organize peer-based mental health support groups. And we wrote this little booklet called Friends Make the Best Medicine, a guide to creating community mental health support networks. And this is something that you can download off of our website, and people all over the world download this, and then they use it to start peer-based mental health support groups. So that was like something that, it was a tool that a whole bunch of people worked on together, and we put it out there to the world, and, and it is there. A few years later, the narrative when we started was, look, we weren't, we didn't even, that, that, the language of consumer and survivor, it wasn't even, yes, yeah, we can ignore that, you just look at, look at. <laughs> <laughs> the 
language of the consumer and the language of the survivor, we like circumvented that whole thing because it's not where we were coming from. We were like, consumer, are you kidding me? The last thing in the world I'm gonna do is call myself a consumer. You know? I mean, it just wasn't, it was like not where, it wasn't the culture that we came from. That the idea of feeling empowered because we can buy things, no, it's <laughs> not, we need new metaphors. So the, basically, when we created our spaces, we said, look, there's some basic ground rules. You know, people who take psychiatric drugs and people who don't take psychiatric drugs, you're welcome here. No, you know, people have differing opinions, but like we have to have respect for what works for us. If you use diagnostic categories to describe yourself or you think the diagnostic categories are a bunch of bullshit, either way, you can be here. Like we're like, you know, cause imagine, imagine the scene of people that we're, we're bringing together. We're bringing together people who, you know, embrace themselves and then people who are like, there's no way I want to even be in a room full of psychiatrists. I would say that for the majority of the people in my organization, the idea of standing up here in front of a room full of psychiatrists is like a terrifying thought, you know? And really, there's like a lot of power going on. I mean, that's like, we talk about the power of stories all the time. There's our individual stories, and then there's the, the collective stories. You guys, for all the good work that you're doing in the world, and it's super commendable, you have the weight of the system with you. There's this biomedical model that people take seriously. And if I walk into your office and I'm there as a patient, you know, it's, it might just be two people, but it, it's not like the power, there's power going on. So anyway, um, the third publication that we put out that was written by Will Hall, who was a really amazing man, which some of you know, I think, is called the Harm, <clears throat> the Harm Reduction Guide to Coming Off Psychiatric Drugs. And I don't know if you've heard of this publication, but it is definitely by far our most popular publication. You can also download it off of our website. And basically the idea was, look, so I take, I've been taking lithium for 11 years, and it's a damn good thing I took it last night, because I got some sleep, you know? But then there's a lot of other people who, drugs help. But I guess, I put this, there's this thread on our website, what would you say to a room full of psychiatrists, you know? And all these people <laughs> responded. <laughs> I, st I started it, I mean, I like, you know, I, but the, like if I was gonna like sum it up, since I have a very limited amount of time, I mean, one very solid thing that I would say, and I'll tell you, we have 12,000 members, you know, and like all over the world, and like over the past 10 years, we've managed to, you know, maybe you've heard of us, maybe you haven't, but we're like there in the underground, like doing our, <laughs> laying the foundations for the stuff we're doing. I guess that, you know, when you put people on medications, keep in mind that they're gonna have to get off them at some point, you know? That that's <laughs> I've been working on trying to get, just lower my lithium dose, and man, it's, I have to go really slow because I've acclimated to it over all these years I've been taking it. It's really hard. They say it's not addictive, but what's, when we start talking about addiction, what does that even mean? Like, if I don't have my lithium, I'm a mess, you know? So, I guess, you know, in the spirit of narrative, narrative psychiatry, I guess I would introduce a few things. I want to say that this idea of gifts rather than disorders, you know, that is something that's really powerful. That is something that for me, you know, I walk around every way. The people in my life know me. I don't think of myself as having a disease at all. I'm like, that's just not the, and I'm classic. If you look up bipolar one with psychotic features, like that could be me, you know? I know that I have to take really good care of myself and that's the, the deal with that. Another metaphor that I think is really powerful that we talk a lot about in the Empress Project <coughs> is the importance of monoculture and diversity. Understanding that we live in a monoculture, that we live in a society that's like, you know, it's like the equivalent of a big cornfield that's very easy. If you put the right chemicals on it, you can just like have one guy with a tractor go along and do all the work and, and there's, there's not the, um, there's like, that's thought of as productivity. <coughs> when there are way more productive ways of being and, like, and there's way more diverse ways of doing things in the world. And I just, um, if we can integrate that, if we can integrate the, that, like, the beauty of diversity and not just on some surface level, but understand, I was having a conversation with the guy last night who was talking about, yeah, we're all diverse about how we, we like to think about, the, you know, 
identity politics, but then what if, when someone's acting weird, we're like, <laughs> you know, give them drugs. And what if we what if we actually created more space for people who people who didn't quite fit in? I think that that's like the that's what the world needs. So thank you. That's my little blurb on the Icarus project. And I just want to say that I'm really friendly. And if anyone over the course of the next couple of days wants to talk to me, I'd love to talk to you. Um, that's it.